Hello and welcome to the Soldiers of Warlords, a brand new series here on Firefly Studios YouTube where we run you through the infantry, cavalry and special units coming to Stronger Warlords next year when it releases on Steam. As the first entry in our Castle Sim series to head to the Far East, Stronger Warlords will naturally include a bunch of new units with new mechanics and abilities, uh, but we're also adding in a bunch of classic throwbacks in there as well, such as the Ladderman, only this time they won't have that preppy Etonian accent. There's no wall tall enough! Just like in the original classic Stronghold Crusader, Warlords will allow you to recruit troops from a variety of different cultures. So while in Crusader you could recruit troops from the Middle East, including Arabic troops, Crusading Europeans, in Stronghold Warlords you'll be able to recruit troops from Mongolia, Vietnam, China and Japan. So let's dive into a few of the units that you're going to be recruiting and commanding in Stronghold Warlords next year. While it's unlikely the first Vietnamese military conflicts began in the 3rd century BC, we've decided to tell the tale of Thuc Phan as one of the first recognisable warlords of the era. Assembling an army mighty enough to overthrow the legendary dynasty of the Hung kings is one hell of an achievement, and this is where our first units are introduced. Given that the first part of our single player campaign is the earliest chronologically, Vietnamese troops in Stronghold Warlords are outfitted as fast attack units. Cheap to train and deploy quickly to the battlefield, the Spear and Blowpipe Tribesmen will likely serve as your fast attack units in skirmish mode and multiplayer. With the Spear Tribesmen wielding a Spear and Shield combo, while the Blowpipe Tribesmen attacks with a short range, fast reload Blowpipe, these units won't be taking down castle walls anytime soon. What they are useful for, however, is harassing the enemy, or quickly taking out worker peasants to cripple their economy. A mix of ranged and close combat units, your Vietnamese troops are perfect for launching early skirmish attacks on the enemy and even taking over weakened warlords with their ability to sprint over and launch surprise attacks. Just don't go firing those short range blowpipes at any nearby fire oxen. Yeah, that's a bad idea. It's worth noting that with no armour at all, tribesmen will be the most vulnerable units in the game to gunpowder and fire in Stronghold Warlords. Just like the heavily armoured knight's resistance to fire and pitch in previous Stronghold games, you'll want ample protection for your units if you notice such traps around an enemy's castle walls. Which leads me to our next region of the game, China. While the Chinese portion of our single player campaign recounts the story of the first emperor of Qin, Qin Shi Huang, our Chinese units are inspired by history, ranging from the 3rd century BC all the way up to the Siege of Di'an in 1132 AD. Divided into separate auxiliary and imperial categories, Warlord's Chinese units are the most heavily armoured, regimented and militaristic in the game. First the auxiliary units, a few of which we'll show you today. In this category we have the lightly armoured archer and axeman. One a classic stronghold staple, and the other a new flavour of infantry to experiment with. Best placed along your castle walls and filling your towers, auxiliary archers are at their most effective when used in defence of your castle. Placed atop castle structures, these units gain a considerable range advantage, as well as protection from attacking missile fire. Their medium rate of fire is offset by high damage against lightly armoured, and of course armourless, enemy troops. One key difference in stronghold warlords is troop displacement and max tower occupancy which means you can no longer fill a single tower with a crazy number of archers to defend your entire castle. Sorry. To accomplish this level of defence and turtle effectively, you'll have to build larger towers and plan ahead when designing your castle walls. And don't forget, archers are a great way to set off traps early, or to start a chain reaction of gunpowder that can blow your enemies away. One easy way to accomplish this is by using their special arrow volley ability, which can also be used to take out large groups of unarmoured enemies in a single move. Auxiliary Axemen, on the other hand, are a completely new addition to the Stronghold roster. Fighting with an axe and shield, the Axemen and Warlords are a world apart from the brummy axe throwers you remember from Stronghold 2. No one's gonna mess with us! Or were they Liverpudlian? I can never tell. Instead, Warlords Axe Wielders are close combat melee fighters, reliable in a pinch to surround and protect your Lord, lead an attack, or quickly take out enemy troops guarding a Warlord that you have your sights on. These units are your frontline fighters in a siege, able to take a volley of archer fire, keep moving and deal high damage to enemy units and siege equipment. Not a million miles away then from the classic macemen, axemen are likely to become one of the most popular units in warlords and a constant feature of your armies. Next up we have Imperial Troops. These are the expensive armoured option for dealing with powerful enemy units or just well fortified strongholds. 
The idea being that while Imperial troops will cost extra gold to recruits, as well as requiring longer resource chains to provide their weapons and armor, your investment will pay off mid-siege. Our Imperial Bannerman is a perfect example. Wearing heavy armor and more than capable of defending himself, the Bannerman boosts the fighting spirit of nearby Imperial warriors, allowing them to take extra damage before loudly succumbing to their wounds. <laughs> We're trying here to encourage players to think carefully about army composition before launching a siege, instead of just doing that classic RTS tactic of overwhelming the enemy with as many units as possible. Another Stronghold staple, crossbowmen return in Stronghold Warlords as an Imperial troop type. Ranged units with high damage output and a low rate of fire, crossbowmen are ideal for taking out armoured foes at range. More heavily armoured and slower than your archers, but just as bad in close combat. The Imperial crossbowmen are your heavy armour counter. Effective as part of an attacking force, crossbowmen can take out troops protected by crenellations more easily, but are also a great way to round out your defences. Plenty of archers and a few well-placed gunpowder traps will certainly work well against lightly armoured units and siege equipment, but to deal with an attacking force of Imperial and other special units, you'll need a number of crossbows to pierce through that thick enemy armour. Now, those are just a handful of the units you're going to be controlling in the early stages of the single-player campaign, with 16 units in total from four different cultures. In addition to that, we're going to have 10 pieces of siege equipment, including the ultimate siege weapon, the trebuchet. And I guess we'll add catapults as well, but you've got trebuchets, so why do you need catapults? Speaking of memes, make sure to check out the description below for an invite to the official Stronghold Discord. Players are already in there finding multiplayer games for legacy titles, winning prizes in weekly competitions, and taking part in our metagame. It's also just a great place to talk to myself, Aaron, Natasha, and other members of the team to get the direct line on development and the latest on Stronghold. We're really excited to see how players put these new units to use in multiplayer, single player campaign, and of course, the favorite offline skirmish mode in Stronghold Warlords when it releases on Steam next year. If you haven't already, please do wishlist the game on Steam and subscribe here on Firefly Studios YouTube for more Stronghold goodness every month.